Are you struggling with those tech interviews? I'm gonna give you one technique to help you land that job. So a couple of weeks ago, we released a video called The One Coding Project That Can Get You a Job, and it's probably up here if you wanna watch it. And that's been viewed over 100,000 times at the time of this recording, and we are overwhelmed by the response from the community watching it. And we've had mostly positive uh, kind of takes on it in the comments, and we had some people kind of debating whether we're right or not. What I want to do is kind of clarify a little bit about what we did and how we can use that project in an interview, um, if you stick with me, and give you a really strong technique to win that next technical interview. Now, sometimes you need to understand, why am I doing this, before you start doing the what do I need to do? Because if you don't know why you're doing it, then sometimes we can fall off with the what we need to do. And I think that's true in business, and it's true when you're trying to land a job. If you understand your why, then you're more than likely to finish the what. So what we ask you to do is, if you're watching this, we assume that you already are learning how to code or you already know how to code. And second, we are assuming that you actually have a project that you can show someone. Because we're gonna use this project as an artifact or as a sales tool to be able to perform better in technical interviews. So let's talk a little bit about the technical interview. Now, most technical interviews are this. You walk into a room, there's a technical manager there, there's a tech lead or somebody like that, and they're gonna ask you a bunch of technical questions, maybe code trivia type questions, so that you can demonstrate your skill and knowledge in any particular area. Now, when you're interviewing for jobs, most people, and I say most people, they're interviewing for the stack that they already know. So if you're an ASP.NET C Sharp person, you're interviewing for ASP.NET C Sharp roles, okay? If you're watching this and you're just trying to break in, Typically, you don't have experience, so you have to pick something to write your portfolio in. And then what we're telling you is once you pick that stack, then you use that to interview for roles that align those together. That's why when the advice comes through in the comments, when I ask you to build it in ASP.NET C Sharp, and people says you can build it in whatever you want, while technically that's true, it means that if you build it in, say, JavaScript, React, or Node.js, or something like that, then you're gonna be interviewing for those jobs. If you've been doing this for 10 years, it doesn't matter as much, but the technique I'm getting ready to tell you also isn't as strong if the stack and the interviewer and the project are all in one thing and it's all aligned together. So that's kind of why we're doing this. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to build a project. And yes, we're gonna pick ASP.NET C Sharp to build that in. You can build it in whatever you want, all right? But we, what we're talking about is full stack web dev. For people trying to break in, if you're a full stack web development, you know and I know that C Sharp and ASP.NET jobs are in high demand. That doesn't mean you can't get a job with React or PHP or Java or whatever, we just feel like that is a really strong stack to know. And starting out, you're probably gonna know one way to do it. Um, if you know eight or 10 languages, then align the language with the interviewer is probably a really good technique as you'll see when we talk about it. So let's talk about the actual interview technique that can help you win that next job. All right, so you made it this far, and so let's talk about recap just a second. Um, I want you to have a portfolio of projects, of business projects, and you can look at the one project if you don't know what to do. I'm assuming you have that right now. What I'm also gonna assume is, and you'll see why, that the stack that you wrote the project in is also the stack that you're interviewing for, and this is where this is the strongest. I'm gonna go through, like, if they're mismatched, what do you do and why it's not as strong, but I'm gonna assume right now that you've written something, say, ASP.NET C Sharp, and you're interviewing for ASP.NET C Sharp position, or if you're inter interviewing for PHP or JavaScript roles or something like that, I'm assuming the project aligns with the roles that you're interviewing for. If that's not the case, stay tuned and um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, so the first thing you wanna do when you walk into an interview is ask them to look at your portfolio, which we talk about a lot here on the channel. I'm assuming that you've been able to get them to look at your portfolio, but let's say that you didn't, and this is where this technique comes in. So when someone asks you, say, what is NBC? Architectural design pattern or a software design pattern, that allows you to separate concerns on a website, all right? And it's, it's demonstrating a model view controller. So that is what I call a academic answer to the question. 
And here is my secret technique that I want to tell you, and it's very simple, and hopefully it will work for you. When you're answering technical questions, I want you to remember these two words, for example. And so when you use, uh, you answer anything in what I would call an abstract or an academic answer to a technical question, which you should do, in that with the two words, for example, and go from abstract to a concrete example of a piece of software that you wrote. And I'm hoping that piece of software is on your portfolio so that if someone wanted to look at it, you could in fact show that to them. All right. And that's the power. So, so what is MVC? If you have that question asked to you and you say, Hey, it's a, it's an architectural design pattern or software design pattern. It's represented in separation concerns with model view controller. For example, I wrote a bug tracker with ASP.NET C Sharp and utilizing the MVC architectural design pattern. And then proceed to tell them at a detailed technical level of a particular page. And what I mean by page, I mean the view, the controller, the models, the whole round trip page lifecycle for data to get showed to the user and how you put that together at a technical level. If you can do that, what you're doing is demonstrating knowledge, which is your architectural or your academic answer, and skill, which is proven in the fact that you have a working project that solves a business problem on your portfolio that you're talking about in a detailed technical level. A lot of times when people are interviewing dev devs for roles, and this is true whether you're a, a rookie dev or you've been 10 years in, and you're talking about a project that you can't show because you work for the company that's proprietary, and that is a common occurrence, they're trying to figure out, okay, did you work on the team? Did you actually do it? Um, were you just on the bug hunt? Were you just doing QA? What were you doing? What was your role in there? And how much coding do you actually do? And that's where all of these kind of technical questions come in. They're trying to rule you into the project or into the company and not out by you demonstrating your knowledge, which is I can answer things that academic skill is the things that I've actually done. If you have a project written, written in the stack that you're interviewing for, that demonstrates skill with that particular stack. Now let's say that you answer that like, like I told you at a deep technical level. What I'm hoping is they'll look at it or maybe they'll look at it post interview, but maybe you can get them to show it to them during the interview. But let's take another question, something very simple, like how does OOP work? And then you could talk about how you had a form on your bug tracker that collected tickets. And inside that form, the first time a user goes to it, it runs an action in a controller that gets it and the form comes back blank. The second time when I fill the form out, it goes to the same controller action, but now it has parameters. That's an example of overloading. Okay. And so that is a way that you could demonstrate and answer a question about something like OOP or something like that. And so what do you need to do? How do you prep for this? Well, what I would do if I'm looking for C sharp ASP.NET jobs, I would go and Google literally the 20 top C sharp interview questions that you're most likely to get. And then you answer all of those questions and you practice answering all those questions by relating them to your project. And now you can see how if the stack matches the project versus the interview, how powerful that gets. If your project's in Node.js and you're interviewing for an ASP.NET C sharp job, then now you have to go right back to the abstract. And if you're just starting out, that's actually hard to do. If you've been doing this for 10 years, it's still hard, but some of you, what I would call in the top 10% of people that interview, do this naturally. Most of us do not. Most of us have to have an artifact to talk about in order to explain the abstract answer. Some of you that interview, and you'll probably leave comments that this is an easy thing to do, and I do it all the time. And what I want you to understand is that you are in the minority. Most people, if you can give them an artifact and train them how to talk about that artifact, then they're going to perform better in an interview than they otherwise would if they just try to stay totally in abstract land. And so what I want to do is give you a powerful technique to perform 
better in interviews. So we're well aware that um, the technique that I'm talking about here doesn't work for every company in every situation. So for example, I've got a lot of comments, well, Google doesn't interview this way, and I know that, I understand that. But what I wanna tell you is that 90% of like the corporate jobs or even at a startup, they're gonna ask you these detailed technical questions and that's how most interviews go. Now, if you're going to another company like Google or some of these other types of companies that have a very specific interview process, you're gonna to have to adapt to that interview process. But what I would say is this, if you get in front of a human being, eventually they're gonna ask you one of these questions and you can still utilize it, even though you may have to say, solve like three coding challenges or over the weekend build a project. So we had a student here at Coder Foundry that was leaving, that just left the program and he was interviewing for a PHP role. I know, PHP is real, it does exist. And he came out here with C Sharp ASP.NET jobs and he had an interview on Monday and he got the call on a Friday. You know what he did over the weekend? He created a PHP app so that on Monday he had something to talk about. That's cool. And I guarantee you, this guy's gonna land that job. Should you build a stack for every type of job that you're interviewing for? And I would say, you might. I think it's, it's very powerful to be able to do that because it's really hard to talk about this stack and try to relate it to the other one. Um, I think it's um, a lot of work, I understand that. And that's why if you're just starting out, Plant a flag with ASP.NET, C Sharp, or React, or whatever you want to do. Plant it there and interview for those roles that match. And it's a whole lot easier to win. If you're in this for 10 years, it's a lot easier for you to talk about all of your experience and people are gonna hire you sometimes based on your resume and your ability to talk about things at a high level. For us starting out with one to two years or three years experience, they're gonna like want more more examples of your skills, more examples of things you can push out. And think about this. If you have a project and you're interviewing for a role and there's say there's five people interviewing, four of them don't have projects and you walk in with a project and you talk about it at a detailed level, who do you think is going to get the job? The person that can demonstrate knowledge and skill. And I think it's a very powerful technique that you should absolutely consider because why? You can talk about it and now you can demonstrate it. So let's do the what. Let's build the project and let's start working on our techniques to interview questions at a very detailed technical level. I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding. <laughs>